Well, that's, that's a difficult question because anyway, in every language, it's difficult to define what is cartilage. But especially in, uh, in, uh, in the Arabic vocabulary and uh, Arabic language, it's difficult exactly to define. Cartilage is the inner layer of the bones in the joints. So if, you, if I can give an example, cartilage is the tiles that they're covering the surface, they're covering uh, the, the, the floor. So these tiles is connect, is, are connected to the bone, so cartilage is connected to the bone, and it is uh, definitely the, the tissue that we have in our body, in the joints, to avoid bone-on-bone -bone, uh, rubbing. When this special tissue that we have in our joints, which is called cartilage, and it's not the meniscus, it's not the ligaments, these cartilage, as we said before, the tiles on the floor get a, a, a lesion, a defect, an injury, then there is a small hole that connects literally the bone and allows the bone to be exposed and to be uh, on, on, a, on a continuous wear with, within the, the joint. That's also a, a difficult question because um, uh, symptoms coming from cartilage defects in patients are uh, relatively a wide range. So pain, swelling, this means a fusion, uh, fluid in the joint, and uh, locking or uh, some mechanical symptoms are the most common ones. But to be absolutely honest, the, the most important ones are whenever a patient has uh, the feeling that his knee is giving way doesn't have that much stability and when in a certain angle of movement he feels a certain um, feeling like locking or a pain in this, in this certain angle. All these cartilage defects, when, uh, when we leave them without treatment, Gradually, they will develop into bigger cartilage defects. Bigger cartilage defects means that the whole surface that covers the bone in the joint is literally not functioning and it's not healthy. And this is what we call in Arabic hoshuna, osteoarthritis. So, just to make it simple, cartilage is when we have a small lesion or maybe big, but one or two lesions. And osteoarthritis is a disease that is generalized in the joint and cartilage defects can develop into osteoarthritis, especially after an injury or after surgeries. There are many ways to, to manage a defect, a cartilage defect. First of all, we start conservatively because many of these are asymptomatic. So the patients might have it and they don't know it. Uh, after an incidental MRI or uh, for another reason doing an MRI, you realize that you have uh, possibly a cartilage defect, but you are still asymptomatic. So in many cases, I would say the first line treatment is conservative with very good uh, physical therapy, elastabiri, which needs to be addressed to the patient and needs to, to take into account the muscle strengthening, uh, among other things. And there are some, some other uh, measures that we take with special insoles like podiatry examination and special orthotics, but also injection therapy with orthobiologics or with uh, um, hyaluronic acid before coming to the point that we need to go into surgical treatment because this is the final treatment in many cases. It is very important and it's, as I said, the first line treatment for uh, symptomatic patients that they do have even mechanical symptoms so they feel all the symptoms that we described before but we start with physical therapy trying to address all the secondary problems that the patient has and uh, it is proven and it's well uh, well established now and uh, there is evidence that injection therapy either with hyaluronic acid or with uh, plasma injections PRP injections or even stem cells in some cases or combinations of them might give uh, a symptom modifying uh, situation to the patient so the symptoms might uh, get less so the patient can be more functional. Surgical options are uh, a wide range of course uh, but we do start 
uh, by measuring and uh, profiling the patient and the defect. And that's the most important part. So when we reach a point that we decide that we go for surgical uh, approach to deal with the problem of the patient, we definitely have to know what are the demands and the expectations of the patient, but we are profiling also the defect. So for a smaller defect, there are several simple techniques that we can do from a simple debridement, just cleaning the area or doing some drilling uh, in order to get some fibrocartilage to cover the area. But when we, it comes to bigger defects, there are several other techniques that can be applied, are applied here in Aspetar as well, uh, uh, cell therapies that we can do in order to reproduce cartilage, in order to transplant cartilage or to regenerate the area. It is very important to understand for the patient and uh, the people that they are surrounding the patient. So either the team, if he's an athlete, or the family, if he's a, uh, just an active individual, and the patient himself, that's the most important thing, that rehabilitation after uh, surgical treatment for cartilage defects takes time. Because literally, we are trying to get some cells of our body in an area that they need to produce back again from the beginning a new tissue. So it's not something that we, we get something from here and we put it there, or we just fix a fracture. Uh, it takes time. So according to the lesion, how big the defect is, according to the healing potential of the patient, but also most, most importantly, according to the technique that we use, the rehabilitation period might take three to four months or even more than a year if we go for bigger defects with transplantation, but with very good results at the end. So it's very important to understand uh, that we need time and if we follow the right protocol, everything's gonna be fine. The ideal patient, unfortunately, is a patient who has uh, uh, diagnosed, has been diagnosed early on, and early on means within a year from starting the symptoms or having uh, a diagnosis. Active individual, so uh, the more active you are, the better results that you have after a surgical treatment. Young individuals, the ones uh, less than 30, this does not mean that older than 30 are not young, for sure, but uh, uh, we are aiming for this. And people that they did not have in the past many surgeries or other procedures uh, before going into a surgical procedure for the cartilage. As we said before, many patients are asymptomatic. This means that they don't feel anything. So uh, these patients need to have a closer follow-up, a very close follow-up, meaning every six months or every year, uh, clinical examination, evaluation, and possibly an MRI, which is the golden standard to, to realize how these things are evolving. So a patient who's already diagnosed and uh, follows a conservative treatment and unfortunately doesn't proceed as planned. Or a patient that we see in a consecutive MRIs that he has uh, a deterioration in, uh, in the appearance in the imaging. And this means that in short time, it will start to have uh, symptoms. Then these are the uh, candidates for, to, to change the plans that we already uh, established for this patient. Thank you.